This is a video I never would have thought of making for a thousand years. But my subs are decreasing, my income is lowering, and my friends are wondering what the hell is going on with me. So, future viewers, my name is Sargent Kugusord, and I have a story to tell. It's no secret anymore that I work as a security guard. I tried to hold this off to protect my goofy aura on my social media, but of course with human nature one or two starts being curious. Literally a week ago, I was tasked to guard this convention called OFA. It's a convention that brings companies and people together anyway. It was freezing cold, I was guarding an entrance, scanning tickets, oh, arguing man. with customers, and suddenly, oh, in the afternoon, I was met with the warmth of a beautiful young lady. You probably know where this is going already. <laughs> I recognize her as a worker because she wore her uniform on her lower half. But I also recognized her face a year ago, in a similar convention in the same workplace. Back then, I didn't think much of her because she looked like one of those too good to be true girls that I would never have a chance with. And I'ma be real, I do look homeless from time to time. What the hell? Although, I like a mermaid slur, she confronts me and asks how she should dress for the cold. This is how I responded. Shit, girl, you ain't got nothing to worry about, you blazing! <laughs> Zooey, mama, I hope nothing, because I want to break a piece of that. Hey, uh, yeah, prepare for the worst. Maybe like, minimum three layers, because I'm shivering. Is that the only security pullover you got? No, I got some more. Yeah, I would take those. We exchanged smiles, and she went on to our changing rooms and office. At that moment, I was thinking if I could make some time to talk to her. Lo and behold, as if Aphrodite was listening, she turned out to be our placer for our breaks. First it was me, and then when I came back, it was the other. I don't exactly remember how we got into a full conversation, because first, my charisma had to be in top form, and second, there's a wave of visitors waiting for me to scan their tickets. We talked about our situation aside from work. She's very ambitious about her studies and seems quite cunning. She wanted to study biomedicine or become a high school teacher. I explained my own situation, how I'd like to become an English teacher and how I'd like to live my life. But she was quick to point out the flaws in my logic. I was like, yo, calm down, I ain't even done. But obviously I said it very differently and very politely with a smile on my face. <laughs> this bitch. I say all of this arrogantly, but in truth, I actually value and appreciate people who can shut my ego down. It makes me differentiate from fantasy to reality. So as the other came back, she moved on to the others that needed a break. However, in my long ass break, I had an idea where she could have been. And so I walked around, then found her. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen, because I had to think of a convo to talk about. So I went to her and said, hey. You doing good? Yeah, I'm doing alright. I've been thinking, should I get some churros or not? There was a churro stand a few steps back. Look, to my, all my female friends, yo, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But to all the boys though, the viewer is ah! As I look back, she said, why not? What speaks against it? And after I agreed, I started walking and I heard her cute little giggle. I kinda regret buying that to be honest, my stomach felt weird for days. Day 2 Nothing happened on day 2, she wasn't there. Actually, before day 2, I had a civilian duty later that night, so I found time to talk. We bonded over the weather since she shivered the way I did. It was still raining cold, yet her warmth felt ever so closer. Day 3 we couldn't talk much because when she replaced the other, a visitor had problems with a ticket and paired that with a Friday, it was fully packed. And yeah, as expected, we couldn't hold a full convo. Still, I had a task to guide some horses. Before I went there though, I saw her looking at me but I was cool with it and just looked forward. Yeah, I don't know what is it with me and ignoring the looks of the women. Maybe I'm used to them being usually disgusted or I'm just oblivious or... Well, it's not looking good, is it? Well, don't worry. It'll get worse. Day 4 
It was a lucky day because as if fate, my boss asked me if I could work for another day. I needed a bag, but also I knew she was going to be here again. This time it was placed at a less eventful entrance with two other guys. And whilst we were all fighting the hail and chills, I was awaiting her encounter. But wait, these two sons of CSGO people just had to ask how we could do our breaks. Because when she arrived, our boss said y'all can vote one out to get a break because we're a group of three. She came closer to me and I was going to put the device over her neck, you know, like a necklace. In that exact same moment, I looked over to the other guys and asked, Wait, I'm confused. What's happening and what do I do? You can take the device with you and go on a break because she'll move on to others who need the break more than us. I was like, I see. All right. I took the device, farewelled her, and went away professionally. One thing about me is that when I am working, I try to be as professional as possible. A virtue that will haunt me for the rest of my days. Because of my second break, I actually met her in the break room. I asked if she's also on a break, but hers was ending. I could have asked her for her Insta or her number right then and there, but but no, the job is obviously more important than your life charging stupid sword. No worries. At least I asked her what she was doing after. Thanks. Wait, you're clearing the rooms today, right? Yes. Yes, indeed. So there's really only one thing to look forward to, and that is the closing task of clearing the halls from the drunken visitors. Man, it's a funny-ass task, but before we get into that, two other boys joined us on the entrance and seemed to be more acquainted with the others. Because when it came to the clearing task, we had to discuss which two are staying and which three are leaving to clear. I was close to punch a mother glucker that night because they said that I should stay. Luckily, I talked with him beforehand and I told him that it would be my first time clearing, which is half true. Ah, charging smart sword, huh? <laughs> Nothing really happened during clearing, couldn't see her yet. But maybe one thing to mention is a dude wanted to get past me, he was two feet taller. I advised him that the exit is the other way. I said this calmly. And he said, yo, no need to be aggressive. I gave a what the fuck face, I said it calmly. Regardless, I stood my ground till the higher ups interrupted. Because they witnessed the whole thing, kindly guided him to the back exit. They cheered and thumbs me up as a sign of respect, so yo. So obviously that put me in a good mood and hyped me up, and as the halls were getting freer, I was closing on her. When we were heading back together, we were having a light-hearted talk about how it went smoothly. It annoyed her that many people asked her about taking photos of her. As much as I wanted to say, well it's obvious, you're quite attractive. I couldn't do that in front of all the security members. Like I said, I have this profession mentality. She asked whether I'm here tomorrow again and reminded herself. Oh right, you told me about what you asked our boss about free entry. Work your ass at the pass. Our laughter echoed throughout the one's joy-filled hall. At that instant, she gave me a signal that I'll never forget. She put her hand on my lower back. I didn't realize it fully. But if I had to describe that moment, it felt like... There's no music here because of copyright, but you get what I'm talking about, right? There is absolutely no way that I would fumble the bag. That was easy for him to say. As they were heading back to the signing off office, he asked whether she would take the bus to the train. But she was getting picked up by her father. He felt disappointed, but he had to accept it. And as he signed off, he went back to the changing room, had a laugh with the boys, and went back down. Slowly, with each step, his heart went heavier and heavier. But he hadn't seen her. With the assumption that she had gone out already, he went speeding out, and still, there was no sign of her. But he was already too far, and he couldn't really go back, could he? But all he did, just head towards the bus. And all he could think of, maybe she was still there. Maybe she indeed left already. Maybe she was waiting for me. Maybe what I felt was just a fraud. Maybe, maybe, maybe. 
but there were no actual facts. On the ride back, he had felt to be the greatest imbecile ever. I dedicate this video to her, even though we've only met for a couple of days. With you, it felt like we've known each other for so long. Yet, not keeping in touch was one horrendous mistake. The job we had to do was dull, the place cold or chilling bones. Until you arrived with your smiling warmth. It made the hours into seconds and the world less empty, less lonely. I thank you. And I'm very sorry. And on the next day, it fell heavy snow, covering most land with the ashes of his bitter, cold heart.